For those of you who were here last year for Mass on All Saints Evening, you heard me tell a story, but some of you weren't there, so I thought that this month I'd share it with you. The story goes back to a very long time ago in Ireland. And this is how the story goes. That once upon a time, there was a man who lived in Ireland, and his name was Jack. And Jack was not a good man. Jack was a thief and a killer. Jack lived many years on the roads in Ireland, taking whatever he wanted and not, never feeling any repentance for it. As Jack aged, he knew that his actions would condemn him to hell. So he needed a way to escape. Now Jack knew, according to the ancient stories, that the devil could be found. Some stories say a moonless night, some stories say a full moon night. But you find him at a crossroads. And so Jack planned to try to find the devil and barter with him. On the first opportunity, Jack went out and found an old crossroads in the middle of the countryside, two old dirt roads with a big tree growing up in the edge of them. And he got out there and he waited. And as he waited in the darkness, he saw a huge black dog come walking down the, cro the crossroads. And it was a beast of coal black fur with glowing red eyes and large, dull yellow fangs. And Jack was afraid, and so he stayed away. The next time he had an opportunity, he once again went out to these crossroads. This time he saw a great black horse stomping along down the road, its hooves hitting the dirt and causing red cinder sparks to fly off, its mouth frothing. Jack was afraid of this as well. The third time he went out, he saw walking through the crossroads a black cat with eyes that were gold, the same color as the moon when it rose. And as the cat neared him, he turned from behind the tree he was hiding and started to bark like a dog. And the cat got scared and ran up into the tree. Well, the second it ran to the tree, Jack pulled out his pocket knife and he carved a cross into the wood of the tree. You see, Jack knew that these creatures that he was seeing walking were the devil in disguise. Once he drew that cross in the wood, the cat looked down and transformed into Satan himself. He looked at Jack and said, Oh, Jack, you know I can't go past that cross. You know you've caught me. What is it that you want? And Jack said, I'll tell you this, devil. I'll let you go if you promise never to take me into hell. And the devil said, all right, Jack, you have my word. On the day you die and every day afterwards, I will never bring you down to hell. So Jack said, very good. And he scratched the cross off and they went their separate ways. And so Jack continued to live a life of wickedness, of harming to others, of thinking of no one but himself. And on the day he died, he strode his way up to the gates of heaven. And he looked at St. Peter, and St. Peter refused to let him in. And Jack said, oh, why can't I come in? And St. Peter looked and said, Jack, you led a wicked life. You're a thief and a killer. You thought of nobody but yourself. There's no way I can let you into heaven. Be gone now. And so Jack sadly walked away from the gates of heaven. And he journeyed in the eternal darkness all the way down to those crossroads where so long ago he met the devil in hopes of seeing him again. And he waited and he waited. And finally he saw the devil come walking down the crossroads. And he said, hello there. I've got nowhere else to go, so I suppose I must come with you. The devil looked at Jack and he said, what are you tired of just walking everywhere? And Jack said, yeah, if I have nowhere else to rest, I suppose I must rest in hell. And the devil smiled and he started to laugh and he said, why, Jack, we had a deal. You'll never come down to hell with me. No, you're condemned to walk this earth in darkness and misery forever. So old Jack looked up at him and he said, I can't even see my way in this darkness. It's darker than I've ever imagined in my life. The devil said, it's not my problem, Jack. 
and he tore open a hole and dove into it, descending into hell. At the last minute, the devil looked up and he says, Here, I'll show you a wee bit of pity. And he kicked a burning ember up from hell, and it bounced across the ground. And Jack looked down at this burning ember and he said to himself, Well, I need something to light my way, but it's so hot I'm afraid to pick it up. And Jack looked over and he saw a turnip field not too far from where he was. So he walked over the turnip field and he pulled out his old knife and he bored out the biggest turnip he could find. And he scooped up the burning ember, the burning coal that the devil had thrown up from hell into it. And from that day on, Jack walked up and down the roads in Ireland carrying this little turnip that he made into a lantern with that blazing coal, making it his job to warn other people to give up their bad ways, to repent. Otherwise, they'd end like him, constantly wandering the earth with no place to rest for all time. And so Jack became known in Ireland as Jack of the Lantern, or as we call him, Jack o' Lantern. Now, when our Irish brothers and sisters in faith made their journey here to the new country, they discovered something. They discovered a much larger vessel they could use for carving jack-o'-lanterns rather than the turnips they use at home. They found pumpkins. And so they would carve out the pumpkins and they would put the lights inside of them and they'd put those in their windows to remind them that we are all called to seek forgiveness, to love one another, to not do what is wrong, and to repent for what we have. The story of jack-o'-lanterns is just a myth, but it's a story that's come with us for a very long time. It's a story that our ancestors have brought over. It's a story that reminds us on the eve of all saints that we are called to be saints, whether we have always lived a saintly life or whether we are seeking to transform our lives to be more saintly. It is what the Lord calls us to do. So let's ask the Lord to help us to take this story and remind us to be good and loving to each other to seek to be as all those carved pumpkins and turnips are in the windows of people's homes, a reminder that we are called to be a light to the world. We are called to be those who bring the love of God and his light to each other.